Number four then from the 2016 Advanced Higher Maths. Here we go, four marks, Gaussian elimination. You've got this system of equations here. Use Gaussian elimination to find the value of a lambda. Notice that wee Greek lambda sneaking in there, which leads to a redundancy. Well, step one, write it as an augmented matrix. One, two, three, just put a solid line. Usually it's a dotted line, yes, but it's just very tedious and lengthy to do that. Two, negative one, four, one, negative three, but two, lambda. And if you do that, you get a mark. Now the idea here is to get it into upper triangular form. Turn these three into zeros, and then you can start working back from Z. So, first step, turn both of them into zero. And of course, if that top equation hadn't started with a one lot of x, then since it's just a system of equations which has got no particular order, you could have changed the order of the rows to put one on top that had a one at the start. But that was okay the way it was. So the plan here is obviously you leave that one alone. Now for this one, that means you want to take away two of them to knock that into zero. So row two would go to row two minus two lots of row one. And to make this into zero, that's just going to be row three goes to row three minus row one. Doing that is sufficient instead of having to write row two goes to row two minus two lots of row one. Well, so that stays as one, two, three, three. Then it'll be two, taking away double the top. Two, take away two, zero. One, take away four, negative five. Four, take away six, negative two. Five, take away six, negative one. Same again here, it's, this is simple, it's just a subtraction. One, take away one, zero. Negative three, take away two, negative five. Oh, look at that. You can see a redundancy popping out at you now. But this one though, two lambda, take away three. But two, take away three, negative one. Now at this point, you spot the redundancy. Redundancy means there's really only two distinct equations here, and that the third one is just a disguise. It's the other two masquerading together to form another equation, which of course isn't another independent equation. So straight away, that's going to be redundant if that number is negative two. However, getting those two into zeros gave you the second mark. Now it just depends which way. You could spot it straight away and say, ah, look, I've got a redundancy if that equals negative two. Or you could state it this way, row three is equal to row two if two lambda minus three equals negative two. Doing that gets you a mark, and then it's just a simple matter of getting the answer after that. That goes to one divided by two, lambda equals a half. There you go, four marks. However, you may well just have carried on to produce the third row having a zero in the middle, so I've still got one, two, three, three, zero, negative five, negative two, negative one, or if I was doing that, I would probably use that opportunity just to reverse the signs in that row, but then to make this one into a zero, and I can't use number row one anymore because that would pop something back in here, but these two rows, just, just subtract them. Row three, take away row two, so zero, take away zero, Zero, for negative five, take away negative five. Two lambda minus three, but that'll give you a plus two, so two lambda minus one. And for this part, of course, it comes to zero. Now I think forming that gives you the third mark, and then you have to still make the final part, which is two lambda minus one equals zero. Maybe I should have said for redundancy. Because after all, if it were equal to some other number here, apart from zero, that would be an inconsistency. So there'd be no solutions. A, which then leads to lambda equals, as before, a half for the final mark.